Okay, now that we've got our arcs made, and there's a total of 24 of them, so 12 of them have the seams pressed up. 12 of them have the seams pressed down. What we're going to do next is going to make piecing the curves so much easier. It takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth the effort. On the outer curve of the arc, we are going to turn that under a quarter of an inch and press that seam allowance. Make it already there. I usually just eyeball it and go ahead and press, but if you want to make sure that you've got an accurate pressed under seam allowance, go ahead and just take one of the pieces of your templates and it already has the quarter inch marked and it's very easy. Just lay it along there. See that it meets the quarter inch mark and start pressing your curve. going to do this all the way down. For each one of the arcs and you're only going to be pressing this outer curved edge. The inner curved edge we're going to leave alone. That's the edge that you'll be gluing which is why you need the glue stick. You're going to need to get yourself an Elmer's glue stick or any kind of a generic washable glue stick and either a couple of toothpicks or I use the pointy end of a bamboo wooden skewer. You might have some of those in your kitchen drawer. And that's what I use to apply the little dabs of glue when I'm joining these arcs together. If you use the template, it's really easy just to go right along there, pull that off, move it over to the next piece, and I use the part that's got the outer curve. Almost done. You'll want to do this for each of your 24 arcs. And I do all the pressing all at once. I just sit down, watch TV, get them pressed out. That way everything is all done and ready to join when I'm putting my arcs together. I'm going to be working with just two arcs for this tutorial. Six arcs takes up a lot of space what we'll be doing, since we have 24 arcs, we're going to be breaking that up into four sections of six arcs each. It's much easier to handle. When you're pressing and when you're gluing, and it doesn't take up a lot of table space. If you try and do them one by one for the entire circle, it's going to be a, a lot of fabric that you'll be muscling around, so it's easier to break it up into four sets of six arcs. Okay, we've got that arc done, and I'm going to press the other arc, then we will move on to gluing them together. All right, now we are at the part where we are going to start gluing our arcs together for the arc construction. And I've got two arcs laid out here. These seams are going down and these seams are pressed up. Our edge is pressed under already. Since I did a pointed edge, Dahlia, what I also did was go back and press under this edge. If you're going to put piece number 11 on, your piece number 11 would have already been sewn on, and your arc would look something like this. 
you'd have that extra piece going out there and this one would have a piece and then you would just simply follow the, the arc here pressing down press that edge under when you get all 24 of your arcs pressed under this edge here will make a smooth circle edge but we're going to just use the pointed edge arc tutorial right now and what I'm going to do I have the arcs while I'm sitting in front of me, they look like a smiley face. So we're going to let it smile at us for a little while. And I'm going to start gluing down my turned under edge. This will help you match your seams, make sure that all your points match, and that your circle, when you're done with your dahlia, will lay flat. And I've got my glue stick and my little piece of bamboo skewer with the pointy end. I just break it off and that's what I use. When I start, I just take a little dab of glue right off of the glue stick. I tried using the entire glue stick at first and di discovered that was a little clunky so I, I went to the skewer and this works much better. What we're going to do is make sure that our points are matching We've got this seam allowance turned under a quarter inch already. We want to lay it exactly on top of this inner arc of this piece with the edges matching. What I do is just match them up as closely as I can, put one on top of the other. When I'm sure that my seams, my edges of my fabric, match back behind there and that my point matches, I'll lift that up and put a little dab of glue inside there. I want to make sure my dab of glue stays inside the quarter inch mark on the bottom arc. That way when you go to sew your arc, you won't be having a, a, a big bunch of glue behind. And because this seam on the inside is pressed up and this one is pressed down, those points will match exactly. On the arc, the first thing I do is glue down all of my intersections. Then I will go back and I will put little dabs of glue in between each one. If you have any excess fabric that you need to work in with curves, you generally already do. But since you've already pressed that seam flat, that part of your job is already done. So we'll just put some more dabs of glue in here. Make sure that my edge there and there, there and there match. Put my little piece of glue down. Make sure it stays inside the seam. And press that point. I found that the Elmer's Purple Disappearing Glue works very well. They also have a brand Extreme Glue Stick that works extremely well. It will stick to anything. And I had run out of my Elmer's, so I'm using just a generic. And I'm moving on down my arc here. You can start really anywhere that you want to on your arc. You don't necessarily have to stop at, start at the bottom and move to the top or start at the top and move to the bottom. All you're doing right now is making sure that those seam intersections match perfectly. Your glue dabs are doing the job that your pins would normally do and anybody that has sewn curves before and, and actually dislikes them as much as I do knows that pinning those curves can sometimes be a real challenge and this was my workaround for not having to deal with that. I'm down at the end and so I want to lift up my little point there, put a dab of glue and then take a look and make sure that the edges of my fabrics are matching. 
and get that a little press. And I'm going to move on up to the top of the arc. This is how you're going to be joining every arc one to the other. And I work in sets of six arcs. This Dahlia has 24 arcs and it's much easier to handle if you break them up into four sets of six arcs. That way when you're all done with those you join your four sections together the exact same way and it's much easier to handle. We're almost done gluing seam intersections. Get some strings, you can tuck them back underneath there. I once again make sure that my edges are matching. And if I want to make sure my little dab of glue is inside the seam allowance. If you get a little too much and it squishes out like that, just take your toothpick and your, or your stick and take it off. If you're using a washable glue stick that's non-permanent and you intend on washing your quilt, it eventually will wash out. But I've never had a problem with the glue coming forth after I've gotten a quilt made. Now I'm to the very edge of the seam here, to the very edge of this arc, and I want to make sure that the edge of this arc matches up with that seam there. Once again I'll just lift up, put a small dab of glue right there, make sure that they match and press it down. Press down pretty good, that way you're making sure that your fabric is adhering to each other. Now, it looks like I've got a few gaps here, and I want to go back and fill those in. They really won't cause a problem. It's just like working in the excess fabric when you're sewing curves the traditional way. Put a little dab of glue right in the middle. Make sure my edges are still matching, and just press that down nicely. Lift it up, slip your dab of glue in there, clean it off. Once you get a section to where you're comfortable with, you have enough places that are glued down and secured to where your pieces are not going to shift, you can move on to another section. Just glue those down, give it a good press. I will glue. Okay, we had some technical difficulties with the camera, but I think we're back on track. What we didn't cover, or what we missed, that we're going to go back over, is our seams are all glued. You can handle it now. That glue sticks pretty well. What you need to do, go back and make sure that your seam, I'm hoping you can see this, is free from the other side. Sometimes a little bit of glue will leak out of that seam line and glue your seam down and you want those free because that's what you're going to sew. So I've made sure all my edges are even, both edges match, and the glue is dry so now it's time to join our two arcs together. and. What we'll also do is sew these sets in six arcs. You will have four sets since you have 24 arcs. It's much easier to handle. I already have an arc finished that has six sections in it. Or I have a section that has six arcs in it. Let me back up and clarify that. 
want to make sure that you can see what it looks like with six arcs. You will end up with four of these. Now, I, I can sit down and I can glue all of my arcs together and let it dry and then go back and sew all of my seams or I can glue each seam and sew each arc together as I go. It's much easier when you work with six arcs in the four sections. You don't have as much bulk to handle and you're not handling all of your circle all at once over and over. The goal that I like to strive for with the Dahlia is to handle it as, as little as possible and as gently as possible. That way nothing gets stretched out. You know how when you're sewing on a bias or you're sewing a curve or any kind of a, a, a circular seam, it's very easy to get those stretched out by handling a little too much. So that's why I do six arcs in one section and then I will move on to another section and then you'll simply join your four sections together the exact same way that you joined your arcs together. So we are going to move on to the sewing machine now. We're going to start sewing our arcs together. We have our seams glued. All of our sections lay nice and flat. And I start at the smallest end. And I'm hoping that I have the camera in there tight enough to where you can see what I'm doing. If you lay your sections out, you'll see it has a natural curve and that's what we want to follow. And I'm going to try and keep my hands out of the way so you can watch as me as I sew. The glue is working in place of the pins. There's no pins to worry about. And once it's dried, it's not going to move. So I start down at the bottom. It's very important that you sew an accurate quarter inch seam allowance on each one of these. If you're off just a little bit, your arc may not lay flat. Therefore, your dahlia might not lay flat. And if you have a little bit of play in there, you can usually press it enough that you can press it flat. If you have quite a large amount of distortion, you may need to redo your seams. And I'm trying to hold my hand back out of the way so you can watch it as it sews. You don't have to worry about shifting. You don't have to worry about pins. Just make sure if you get this little bubble here that you pull that flat and that it's flat on the other side because you don't want to sew a tuck into it. We'll just sew those right along. The curve will get a little bit more pronounced as you get toward the larger ends, but that's okay. Just make sure that even though you've got a few tucks over here on this side, those are meant to be there, that's the curve. You just want to make sure this area right in here is laying nice and smooth and you're not catching any tucks in your seam. Almost done to the edge. Now since I have sewn my arc to have a pointed edge, This underneath edge is already turned under because we had already pressed this edge and this edge to create our point. So what I'm doing, I'm keeping that little edge on the bottom arc already turned under. And we are just going to stitch right over the top of that bottom seam that's turned under and back stitch right over it. And we have two joined arcs that have perfectly matching points. 
and your point here is matching. And we are ready to join another arc to it. I'm doing these two as an example. This is the step that you'll repeat for each of your 24. As long as your seams are alternating with one arc going down, the next arc going up, and then another arc going down, as long as you maintain that pressing scheme, your points are going to match and your dahlia is just going to come out beautiful. So I would go in and press this seam now. I never press the seam open. The seams are already laying nice and flat. I would simply take my iron and press that seam. You want to follow the seam with the way that it's already laying and your arcs will lay perfectly flat. And now we're ready to just complete all 24 of your arcs and join them all in the same manner. And the next section we'll get to, which I still have to work on myself, is creating our center. I plan on applicating mine, but the circle will be a 15 and a half inch circle, unfinished, which would translate to a 15 inch circle with the seam allowance turned under and finished. You can piece your center. You can applique your center. I plan on applicating mine. I just don't know what I plan on doing with it yet. So once you get all of your arcs completed and sewn together into your dahlia, then we will all be caught up together and we can work on our centers. Thank you.